Don't be shy, cause I, the life won't bring you down too far. This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. I left the bubble Saturday night. And Adam, you've arrived in the bubble uh, Monday afternoon. I have indeed, yeah. Uh, arrived a, I don't know, a couple of hours, two or three hours ago and uh, had my test and uh, in, in my room now and waiting for the results, which I believe will, I mean, you tell me, sometime around sort of eight, nine o'clock tomorrow morning and, and hopefully that'll be it, out in the bubble and um, on we go with Media Week. I can't wait for it. Actually, it's an adventure, Cougar. We've been to all sorts of places, haven't we, around the world and um, this, is, uh, this is just another part of the journey. It's um, obviously... It's for a main health and safety reason. It's very important and um, you know, everything is being done in the correct way. And to be near the fighters, you have to be tested. Everyone's being tested. Everyone's being treated the same way and um, you know, bring it on. It's going to be, a, I don't know, you tell me what last week was like, but it's going to be one big happy family, isn't it, when I get out of this room? Yeah, it will be. It was actually a good week. Um, if you can get over that first initial day where you're stuck in the room, which is fine. I mean, but from tomorrow morning, it's good. Like the bubble is quite small when, you know, you've got a media room, a gym and an outside area, but you can't not bump into people there. I think some of the boxers decided to uh, stay in their rooms most of the time, which is up to them. But uh, I, I Trainers. I'm looking forward to seeing all the trainers. You know, you've got Dave Colwell here, Joe Gallagher, Shane McGuigan, you know, I think uh, Jamie Moore's here. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's our top, you know, leading trainers in Britain here. And I'm not sure Adam Booth is around, but there's a lot of, main you know the main trainers and obviously like Anthony Fowler went from one to the other and I'm quite looking forward to all of that yeah definitely do you know what I will say like the, the I got tested on the Tuesday of last week and uh because I, you haven't been tested before it does play on your mind I'm not trying to panic here but it does play on your mind to think like I'm sure everyone thought at some point and thought what if it did come back like positive it's like a, a thing that in, in your head and I think once you get over that bit then it's fine like Eddie was panicking Eddie was panicking but, but, for like a good day of course of course because no one wants to leave now do they no one wants to you know if you're positive if I'm positive tomorrow morning I have to go home it'd be terrible you miss out on everything so you know but the, it, it's done for a reason and, and and everybody has to be safe and, and that's you know we, we needed patience we've spoken through lockdown we needed patience to bring boxing back and it's now it, 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 all the all the um uh facilities the procedures everything has to be have to be right it has to be the right environment the british board have, have played a central role um you know and that's and that's absolutely key and i think we saw that on saturday night that you know it's that's the most important thing here in, in this period you know with the pandemic and everything that you know it took time to bring boxing back you know we we've seen football come back and brilliantly and, and cricket and formula one and snooker and many other sports but you know for boxing to come back a dangerous sport I have to make sure that obviously the, the usual medical procedures the paramedics the doctors you know a, a, a right to be there they're not needed on the front line you know that was important and obviously you know now the testing is is and the social distancing you know matt and i were were you know way apart in you know in, in commentary on Saturday night and you know it's very weird you know we're 10 meters back it's it's strange it's 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 a new challenge and you're know, not being next to your, your commentator and sort of you know it's because it's a it's a you know it's a communication it's a relationship you have through commentary and to be sat in two different boxes is, is a bit weird but you know needs must and you, you have to get on with it and abide by the rules and the regs and um you know I think the great news was that boxing, certainly on Sky Screens, came back in a, in a fantastic way on, on Saturday night. We've watched the BT Studio shows, and it's great having Frank um, come back so regularly with shows there. And, uh, you know, they've done ever so well internally in that studio. But we all knew Eddie wanted to do something different, you know, in, in his back garden. I thought it looked spectacular. Um, it was a, a, a big fight feel. Um, and the fights got better and better as the night went on. So, yeah, I thought it was a tremendous uh, start to fight camp and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Seems like they did. I mean, I, I saw you from the distance, I like wave, but you were in an area that I wasn't allowed in, you wasn't allowed in my area, uh, <laughs> so to speak. So, yeah, it was just uh, a little bit weird. Like, even Johnny, I saw Johnny from the distance. I couldn't go into the, the bit where him and Anna was, and 
I could have only, I was only allowed to be with the people that I had quarantined with. It was all. Kind it, of it, it's like we're all back together. We've waited for that moment where boxing, you know, brings everyone back and there's all the familiar faces, but we couldn't actually get near each other. It was, it was very surreal. But as I said, you know, everyone was there, you know, do, doing what they needed to. And the, the key was to get boxing out for the fighters, for the fans. And that was, that was job done. The fact it, it looked incredible you know from from the drones and the pyros and the fireworks and sweet caroline and all the tricks that eddie had up his sleeve and, and the work of matchroom alongside all the work of the sky production and operational teams absolutely brilliant and uh, you know it was uh, a lot of people have sort of reached out who don't normally watch boxing i think who were you know fascinated by what it would look like from from a garden and and um you know it was the rig was fantastic wasn't it it looked uh, it looked terrific and you know but the most important thing is as i've always said is that the boxing's got to be great and and the fights have got to be good and the fact there are so many sort of 50 50 or 55 45 fights you know throughout fight camp is is what i think is going to make the whole month uh, uh, you know a, a month to remember and um and, and on saturday night you know we we started with a great performance from jordan gill and then we moved through and and you know we we had that the, the fantastic you know knockout from from dalton smith and then you know we had the fabio wardley it just got better and better and then we had a great british title fight which was a real humdinger until it was stopped and he thought if Gavin Gwynn could just hold on for the you know for the sixth seventh round maybe he could come on strong maybe he'd punch himself out Tennyson but you know Tennyson got it all right he was punching hard at lightweight and he's so excited to watch and then the main event was was fantastic wasn't it It was a throwback it was it was everything we hoped it would be and more and actually they saved the best to last the final round was was one of the great rounds wasn't it in in recent times in a British ring and uh, that was the final you know, three minutes of the first fight camp. So yeah, it was it was great. There's things we need to look at. There's things that always can be improved. It's a work in progress. It was a, a big risk for for Eddie to to undertake. And um, but look, I think everybody we got something out of it. The fighters uh, seemed to enjoy it even without a crowd. They were very focused. I thought they they got on with the job in hand. It's really important. They've been you know locked down for so long. They've been inactive. You know the ones that have got out the gate quick quickest are the, are the ones that are going to really benefit from this. You know they've got one under their belt now. They can they can move on quick quickly. And you know now we've got a, a, the next batch. I mean it was like you know get your breath back on on Sunday and here we go again. And and that will be for the next three weeks. It's fantastic. Just want to kind of pick up on a, something you said uh, a couple of minutes ago. This is all a little bit of a learning curve for everyone, including see Matchroom, Sky Sports, um, the, the British Boxing Board of Control. Uh, there was just a couple of points from the other day. Obviously, we, I'm sure you was as well at some point kind of reading the feedback from on social media. And I think um, one of the questions that kept being asked was about the option of crowd noise. Um, so can you just kind of take us through that and explain the decision to have that? It wasn't so much as crowd noise as almost like what Eddie Hearn described as background hum. mumbling. Yeah, or hum or whatever. It's, it's a very difficult one, isn't it? I mean, it, it's a case like on the football, it's, it's almost like what you prefer. You know, they've, they put the crowd noise on the football. And for example, my eldest daughter is, is a very passionate football fan. And my son who's just 15 months younger, he, he, reads, he reads it tactically and, and he's got a different look on it. And actually she loves the crowd noise because it, it reminds her of, you know, the big atmosphere and the goals flying in and all that. And he likes hearing the players, you know, he likes hearing something different and, and how they're, they're going about the game. So they fight over which channel they want to hear it on. And, and that's, you know, in, in, in the football world, we're lucky. We've got the, the Premier League channel, the football channel. There's that ability to put sort of two options up. And I think that's quite important because, you know, that everyone's going to think differently. You know, is it 70% of people like the crowd? You know, 30 don't. Or, you know, is it a little bit closer than that? It just sort of depends what you want. You're never going to get it right for everybody. And, and I think that my, my gut feeling is that it's got to be authentic. And I think that when you've got a, an empty arena, an empty studio, whatever, then I think authenticity is important. Now, does the crowd add uh, sort of 
you know, fake crowd noise, whatever level, does it add something to it? Yeah, maybe it does add the, you know, with the commentary mix and everything, a, a more of an excitement. But I think if you're seeing that, you know, for me, it's like you just want to hear it as, as raw as possible. And, and then, and we've been looking at the sound, you know, how could we can improve the, the sound of the punches, you know, the corner sound, stuff like that. And especially as, of course, they've got the whole, you know, outfits on the trainers, you know, it's difficult to hear them. And, you know, so there's all these things to battle with about the sound. Sound. Sounds always a, a, a difficult one, and you're open air as well. So, you know, I can I can understand it. It's it's a it's a debate that's you know that, that's been had internally as well at Sky that I'm sure has been had with Matra. Eddie and I were talking about it. I mean, we've been talking for weeks and weeks every day about this fight camp. You know, since the the first inception, he he said it was his idea. Frank says it was his. You know, it was all, all of us wanted this, and I think there's so many hurdles. They had a lot of hurdles, you know, locally and obviously with the build and the money being spent on it, and then you know the production side with the cameras and, and the sound and the feel and where everyone can go. And I think we've. The two, two words I'd say is one is adaptability and one is authenticity. And I think the more authentic we can make it, the better. And it is a learning and an and, and, and improving process, hopefully through it. But also it's important to adapt. And the fact is we've got boxing back. That's the key. You know, Frank's brought it back in BT Studios. We brought it back in, in, in Eddie's Garden. Boxing is back on BT and on Sky. And that's fantastic. You know, that's really important. The most important thing is the fights. And, you know, look, if you have to have a bit of fake crowd noise or no crowd noise or a bit less of this, a bit less of that, I think we've just got to sort of accept that we're all trying our best to give the, the fans what they want. And the most important thing for me is the best fights. And I think we had a lot of that on Saturday night. And I think if we can continue that through fight camp, then, you know, we'll have done, we'll have done really well. And, and it, it is, we are learning. It is something different. Um, and I think that the people that I've spoken to, maybe more the casual fans, not the hardcore fans, are saying it was just a spectacular, wow. You know, I mean, within the, the difficulties of putting on any sporting event at the moment without a crowd, because we all want a crowd. We all want Sweet Caroline. It was great hearing it blaring out, but we all want people singing and rocking to it. We know that the crowd makes it, that makes boxing. And that's what, you know, we've worked so hard over the last decade or so, Matchroom and Sky, to bring the big arena feel back, to bring that buzz back, to, to bring the, the real noise and atmosphere. And suddenly to have none of that, it's really hard. But this is what we're, we're dealing with at the moment. Health and safety, the most important thing. It's a pandemic. We've got sport back. Let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy what we've got. And let's work on improving it as much as we can to give the fans what they want most. And there is going to be, you know, subjectivity there. Um, another thing I found strange from the night was, uh, and I saw a few people picking up on this as well, and obviously we understand the element of social distancing, not just in boxing, but throughout the whole country and the world at the moment. But it, it seems bizarre that Cheeseman and Eggington had gone through a 12-round war when they come to do their post-fight interview that they were standing like worlds apart from each other after they'd just been knocking lumps out of each other for 12 rounds, Adam. I, I know, and they, and they hugged and however many times in the ring afterwards. It's, you know, it's, that, it's that wonderful shot, I think I said it in commentary, where you know, they, they have been giving everything, you know, at war for 12 rounds. And, and the first thing they do is hug after the bell. I love that moment. And then they kept doing it. And it was like, you, you wanted to sort of really hear what they were saying, because it was like, should we do this again? Who do you think won? All that sort of stuff. You know, it's, it, it's, it's great to see those shots. And, you know, they come in the, in the interviews. But look, it, it is, there are rules, you know, there are, there is a social distance that has to be, you know, maintained. It, it's weird. It's obviously not in the ring, but That's then... Thing, but then, but, but then they don't they don't have masks on and the referee does and the corners have you know the whole sort of paraphernalia so you know that's the, the board have to do what what is right from a from a, a medical point of view okay there was a bad knockout on the show as well and you know that it, it's important that the, the the all the medical procedures are absolutely right and if things as i was saying to you it's difficult to hear the corner sound because of that you know I thought with, okay, with in the crowd, in the uh, arena show, sometimes you have the music up, so it's difficult to hear the corners then because you're trying to entertain the crowd. And there's no crowd, so you could hear the corners, but actually you can't really hear the corners because you can't hear them speak with, with all the stuff on. So it's really hard, isn't it? But then we wouldn't normally be commentating 10 metres back. We normally... 
probably be on on the apron, sort of feeling it all. And but, you know, ten meters back is a long way. You know, it's like we've we've commented in, in in America on shows sometimes five, six tables deep, and you're sort of looking at the ring, but also looking at the monitor. It's a very different way of doing it, and especially when you're not near your co-commentator and you can't sort of feel with it together. It is hard, but that's where we are. That's what we've been told. Those are the rules and regs for the moment. Maybe they'll change. Maybe they'll adapt. But you know, it is what it is. And look, we you know to get them to interviews. I think it's it's interesting with boxing because we we always had so much access, haven't we? You know, you and I are around the the the, pre, the press weeks, and you know we do interviews, and you you get. <laughs> Yeah, you get what you want with everybody, really. Everyone wants to talk. But actually, it's a slightly strange process. And as you said, you couldn't really get near me and Johnny, and I couldn't really get near them. And they were everyone was in a sort of slightly separate world. But, you know, we try and pull it together. And I've got to say, the teams behind the scenes have done such an amazing job, Coogan. Honestly, it, it, to get this going, you know, the, 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 uh, the TV trucks were in, in the field right down the back end. They were nowhere near us. And, yeah. you know, to have, you know, Matchroom and Sky have worked so well together on this and and you know there are there are people that deserve a, a lot of credit for actually even getting this done so i think those you know those of us who are sort of working on the night we we get on with it we're, we're the we're the lucky ones that we we get to to do that stuff on the night but really all that work behind the scenes to actually f- put it on the procedure of getting it on um a lot of hoops have been jumped through and um look i think the, the main thing is whatever you know the, the little things we're talking about the sound or the the social distancing or the sort of the, you know being it, it being surreal and, and and it was but i think that you have to slightly take to one side and just enjoy the fact that we've got fights back that's the most important thing and we had great ones so um you know really really pleased with that so, Fight Camp Week 2 continues, obviously, this week, where you're at, um, headli- headlined by a fight between uh, Terry Harper and Natasha Jonas, the first all-British female world title fight ever. Yeah, something to look forward to, and uh, the first world title fight on Fight Camp as well, Adam. I think it's a really important fight, and I think, yeah, it's the first world title, isn't it, since since lockdown, and... Yeah, two British women, two great British women who are fighting uh, for the WBC Super Featherweight title. Terry Harper has been a, an incredible story, a wonderful breath of fresh air, that fantastic sort of partnership with Steffi Bull. And, and she's just been terrific. You know, she walked away from boxing, went and, and, and did a degree, came back into it, small hall, built her way up, you know, took her chance on a Sky show where she was going to be deep down. Then she was opening the, the TV slot. And from there, she's just gone from strength to strength, hasn't she? Hasn't she? She's, a, she's a great woman. She's a fantastic uh, character, Terry. And she's, you know, she's in the ring. She looks terrific. You know, I'm beaten in, in 10 fights now. And, uh, you know, is she going to be a champion for, for a long time? Still very young. Natasha Jonas, uh, at a slightly different stage, she was a, a fantastic amateur, as we know, with that wonderful day when she fought Katie Taylor at the uh, at the Olympics. And we all thought that was going to be the big rematch. I mean, that was such an incredible atmosphere. Talking about crowds or lack of the crowd in that, that was Johnny and I went and we were surrounded by, you know, most of Ireland for Katie. And then there was pockets of, of Natasha Jonas supporters as well. Very popular woman from Liverpool. A you know, great story, you know. Sister plays football, Nikita Paris, and she's been, you know, she's just a, she's great, isn't she? Tasha Jonas, they both are, and of course, because she's a, a southpaw, she's an attacking southpaw. She's with Joe Gallagher. There's, you know, there's so much to go on there. Um, of course, she had that shock defeat, but she's rebounded from that. And uh, look, it's a super featherweight. She's always wanted a world title. This is her weight, and I tell you what, I think, you know, she's she is an underdog, but I think she's an extremely live underdog. Dog. and I think it's going to be a great great fight and uh, yeah it just it's it's fantastic women's boxing is uh, is is going through the roof at the moment you know um, my former scholar Savannah Marshall waiting for her chance to fight for a world title Katie Taylor and Delphine Bassoon fight we worked so hard to get over the line you know is happening on the, the the sky sports box office event on august the 22nd can't wait for that fight that rematch for new york and it is it's just it's you know Chantel cameron shannon courtney there's so many you know clarissa shields is doing in america there's so many great women at the moment and they've got their chance and they've got their stage so let's really get behind them and really push it this week i think it's a great fight it's a great top of the bill and um i can't wait yeah, I just want to kind of point out the other four fights on the on the bill. Hopi Price in action, uh, Anthony Fowler and, and Harper, Billum Smith taking on Nathan Thorley, and uh, Jamie Moore's 
young prospect, uh, Akib Fiaz, taking on Kane Baker. So, yeah, there's a mix of uh, all kinds of different fights there. As there was, you know, on Saturday, you know, that mix on Saturday where you had that, you know, that English heavyweight title with Fabio Wardley, who had four white collar fights, suddenly fighting for an English title. And, and, and Simon Valili, who had this decorated amateur career. And, you know, that was a sort of strange one. You had a very, very interesting sort of almost like a, it was always going to be a chess match on paper with Jordan Gill and Reese Bellotti. And, you know, one more probably for the trade fans. And yeah, it didn't catch fire, but it was a great performance from, from Jordan Gill. And then, you know, you, you had the prospect coming through in Dalton Smith, but, but also in a, in a in a tougher fight, you know, with Nathan Bennett, who was really up for it. You know, then you had the the, the British title where you sort of fa- favoured Tennyson because of his power. But, you know, we'd seen Gwyn against Cordina and then, you know, you couldn't split the egg and the cheese all week before that. So th- this is, you know, this is different. I mean, you've got Chris Billum smith You know, w- what a great story he's been. Um, terrific guy outside of the ring. We've used him on our... our, our um, punditry as well he's he's terrific he had that great win over Craig Evans he's look he's a Commonwealth champion the cruiserweight division is absolutely buzzing you've got a guy Nathan Thorley who's coming up really he's in natural light heavyweight he's come up to the cruiserweight division to make his mark you know with Gary Lockett there's a great sort of backstory there he's unbeaten that's a really good fight Hopi Price you know he looks he looks the part doesn't he He looks very very talented but you know Johnny Phillips is tough and, and that's a that's an interesting one you know he's fought at different weights as well he could really bring the heat to Hopi Price um, great having Anthony Fowler back you know always always love watching Fowler um, Adam Harper good story as well himself you know he's uh, I think he's going to give absolutely everything to that and we really fancy the upset there uh, of Fowler and as you mentioned Akib Fiaz you know Jamie Moore's young hopeful and again but in with a, a guy that's um, that on paper his record's not great in, in, in Kane Baker and he's taken tough fights you know with Conor Ben and, and, and others but but he's he, he again he'll fancy that so I think you've got some really live um, underdogs and they're not big underdogs as I said it's if it's either your 50 50s or it's your 55 45s and you know you're going to get one or two uh, either upsets or you're going to get some thrillers I think so there's again something for everybody in this and, and, and a mix and match and you know it's uh, it's going to be another great night but I'm really looking forward to the top of the bill this one I'm really looking forward to the uh, the world title fight and as you said the first time ever to British women fight for a world title and um, you know Joe Gallagher and Natasha Jonas are brimming with confidence and Terry and Steffi just think this is it you know this road now that they've been working so hard for and now they're at that platform and um, you know and it's it's a terrific I mean it's a great fight in its own right but it's a terrific hors d'oeuvre for a couple of weeks later when you get Katie Taylor and Delphine Bassoon as well so you know three fight camps on Sky Sports then the Sky Sports box office fight I'm still sort of pinching myself that Dillian White is going to be fighting Alexander Povetkin I mean we're going to be seeing him in, the, in this in, in this bubble aren't we you know the big Russian and you know and uh, I mean how are they going to deal with it Dillian coming from Portugal and all that and Katie from America I mean it's you know it's it's great isn't it isn't it a fantastic thing that's been orchestrated here to make it happen you know we've got BT going great guns with their shows we've got us you know we're back with a bang August is going to be one to remember and who knows you know what will happen beyond it because we don't know when crowds are back you know we've seen we thought there was going to be a test event at the crucible now they can't you know Boris has come in and said no more crowds at sporting events for, for the foreseeable so we don't know where we're going to be you know maybe he'll have to keep the, the fight camp in the garden you know who knows maybe AJ will end up fighting there but you know we hope that obviously the crowds come back sooner um, rather than later and you know we need that but we've got to adhere to the government we've got to adhere to the rules and you know while we we have that opportunity um, to do something different we we get on with it and that's why I've always admired Eddie and Frank and Matram because they um, you know they take the, the risks they, they they roll the dice they, they want to do something different something uh, innovative and, and and that's exactly what they've done again and you know it's uh, you know uh, you know they may be messing up the grass in the back garden, but you know it's uh, it, it looks incredible, doesn't it? And you know it's going to be a, a fantastic next three weeks. Um, Adam, what was your initial reaction when you saw that picture of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury in Marbella? First thoughts? They set it up. First thoughts: they talk a little bit off off the record. Um, both of them must have known they were going to be there. Uh, why not? Let's let's get tongues wagging. That was my first. 
That yeah, was my first thought. You can't have thought that, really. How are you going to get them to set that up? Do you know what? I did think that, actually. I really did, because, you know, I have I know that they've spoken a bit in private. They've sort of, you know, had a... And I know they're both great guys, and I both, they're both, you know, they're both fighters who want to fight each other, and they know it's going to happen at some point. And I did. That was my... Honestly, that was my first thought. Um, and maybe it wasn't many people's first thought. Maybe they thought, oh my God, accident, coincidence, etc. And everybody I speak to tells me it was complete coincidence. Um, so, okay, well, I was wrong. Um, that's what I thought. Um, the fact it was, it, it happened. Look, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? You know, both of them, um, you know, on, I, I know they're both sort of, training but on holiday and they've you know they've both dealt with lockdown and they've both gone to you know get some sun or whatever and it, you know it just adds to the to the melting pot doesn't it? it adds to the spice i had a long chat with um anthony joshua on the sky vip event um uh when was that a couple of weeks ago and uh and it was um and he look he, you know he he knows they're gonna fight they're going to fight, but they've got a lot of hurdles first to get through. You know, Anthony's got to get himself past Kubrat Pulev and, and Tyson's got to get himself through the trilogy with Deontay Wilder. And Deontay Wilder is, 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 is always going to be dangerous and he'll want revenge more than anything. So they've got to get out of the way. You know, Dillian White is, is mandatory for Tyson Fury. That's another sort of fly in the ointment too. He's, he's got Povetkin. There's a lot to happen, but I think if we get both those, uh, those sort of almost like semifinals, aren't they? Pulev and, and Wilder, um, not any disrespect to both of them because Kubrat Pulev will fancy the, 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 the opportunity to take out uh, Andy Joshua. You've seen what Andy Ruiz has done. And of course, Deontay Wilder, we know how dangerous he is and he'll, he'll want to right the wrong. So, you know, if they can get past those by the end of the year, then, you know, next year we look towards that. But yeah, it just, it's, listen, it, you know, they're, they're both, they're, they're two heavyweight champions that we've got in Britain and they bump into each other and it's, um, it's great. But for me, that, you wanted my gut reaction? You wanted my thoughts? I, I, I thought, well, whether it was a stage or not, I thought, I wondered if they chatted and said, you know, hey, we might be over there and, you know, let's, let's just sort of bump into each other. That was my gut reaction. But that's maybe only because I know that they do occasionally speak to each other. When I said to Anthony, you know, is that, did he, you know, was that sort of set up? And he's like, no, I don't deal with Tyson Fury. You know, he's just an opponent. He's someone, like, you know, he's a boxer that I'll deal with. I've got a relationship with Tyson Fury. Um, but look, they have, you know, they, they, they obviously do respect each other a great deal and, um, and they know that when they fight each other, they're going to find out A, who's number one and B, they're going to make a lot of money. So, you know, it's a, um, it's a fight we look forward to at some point. The British fans deserve that at some point. Of course, we all want it, but I can't see that happening for, for quite some time and there's a lot to get through first. So, um, so yeah, let's just, um, let's, let's, you know, it was, it was coincidence, Goog. What did you think? My initial reaction, and I, and I, I, I didn't believe that that was Tyson Fury. <laughs> I, I it was like the Mike Tyson lookalike. Remember that when Mike Tyson's lookalike got off the plane and when it, before he fought, um, I can't remember. Yeah. It, was, it was. It was. I, um, I, I, I phoned. I actually rung Eddie and I said to Eddie, "What's going on in my bar?" And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And I, I WhatsApped him the picture, and I was like, "He was like." Is that Fury? And we we're, we're both then zooming in looking and he went, yeah, he went, he went, that's Fury, hundred percent that's Fury. We looked at some of Tyson's beard like that he'd had done, because it looked like he it was proper designer beard, and we looked at it and was like, Yeah, that's definitely him. But initially I thought it was somebody that looked like Tyson Fury. That's what I thought. Um, isn't it? Isn't it? But isn't this is boxing. We love a story, don't we? And this is a big, big story. And the fact they uh, they bump into each other, and you know everyone's going to have their own interpretation of it. I don't think much was 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 talked about though in terms of. I think it was like you know, get on and win your fight, get on and win yeah, your fight. Yeah. You know. But listen, it was um, it was yeah. Listen, it's a it's a great picture, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, you mentioned Dillian White there, Adam. Mm. It must be what a thousand and ten days now. Mm. He's been sat there as the number one in the WBC. Um, I mean, his situation is just not any more clearer. I mean, obviously I've spoken to Eddie, I'm sure you have, about what happens um, should he beat uh, Alexander Povetkin on August the 22nd. Um, and Eddie's reaction to it is they'll do everything they can to try and push that situation to put him in line to fight the winner of Fury and, and Wilder. Yeah, this is what I mean about 
the the Joshua Fury Fury Joshua fights two fight deal or whatever they they might have come up with that there's there's a lot of as we know boxing is a is a very complicated business and there's there's a lot to get past first and yeah and Dillian deserves his opportunity of course he does he deserves to be in the ring fighting for a world title I mean it's long overdue he's done everything that's been asked of him you know he lost to Anthony Joshua in a great fight he's won every single fight since. he's looked fantastic you know he's 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 fought everybody you know he's he's gone in with with Derek a couple of times you know Joe Parker he's you know he's Lucas Brown was unbeaten you know that knockout I mean he just you know Oscar Rivas was a tough fight last year Alexander Perfekin none of them are easy you know they're all hard fights and uh, what I really respect Dillian for is the fact that he gets on with it he'll take anyone on and you know it's it's almost like it's the politics and it's the and it's it's ridiculous and it's got to a stage where you know, you just wonder if he'll ever really get that opportunity but and, and how much does he what does he say to you and to how much does he really want to be a world champion or how much does he just want the big fights you know entertain the public show the public he'll take on anyone I don't know because when I speak to him he's like ah the title whatever the world title it's like you know I just want to give value for money I want to do my business I want to make my you know, legacy. And I think he's known as the guy that will fight anybody. I think he's known as an exciting fighter. I think people really like him. I think he's got that, that big cult following Dillian. Yeah, we want to see him in with him, don't we? We want to see him in with Fury or Wilder or Joshua, you know. Anthony would say, well, he had the opportunity to fight me again. You know, he didn't want that. And, and Dillian would say, ah, oh, they didn't do the right deal. And it was too, you know, they, they, a short training camp and they were always going to fight Jerome Miller. So there's always different stories on each side. But it's interesting for Eddie because Eddie's got Dillian and he's got Anthony. And, you know, it's, they could fight each other. They could even fight each other. You know, look, you know, it, it, we don't know what's going to happen around the corner with, with, with the pandemic. You know, are we going to, are we going to be easing out? Are we going to be going into another lockdown? Is there going to be another spike? Are we going to end up with really the majority of British fighters fighting each other, which actually, okay, it could work out that, that Joshua White fight. It could work out that Fury White fight. It could work out that you could have a, an almost like a merry-go-round of all those, the British heavyweights fighting. You can even throw Daniel Dubois in there if Frank agrees or Joe Joyce, you know, and, and you could do something, something like that. But the big problem we've got with those big fights, you know, with Usyk Chizora, with Joshua and Pulev, and obviously with Wilder Fury, is that with no gate, how are you going to make the money? How are the finances going to work? I think it's incredible that we've managed, or Eddie's managed, with everybody's help, with Team White, with Team Povetkin, with, you know, Brian Peters, with Team P Pursun, everybody, to get that sort of show out on August the 22nd with no gate. I think that's incredible. And I think they deserve so much respect for that because, you know, Dillian fighting in the garden is, is one thing, but actually fighting without the, the, the finances that thousands of fans bring in, it is something else. It's amazing that we've, we've managed to get that sort of bill together. So I think, you know, we're going to need fans back or something novel again. You know, we look to maybe Eddie to, to provide that something you know, that we haven't thought about maybe that that could happen. That, but ultimately, we want you know Joshua and Pulev to happen in front of fans. Hopefully, at somewhere like the O2, with however many you can get in, because you know realistically, fighting in the garden, you know, it's you, you can't generate that unless you you know you're going to get a few people in who are going to pay you know thousands or millions for for that sort of privilege. How do the finances work? So you've got that. So in a way, it's quite good that that Joshua Fury is a is a way off because that's obviously you know needs huge money to make that fight. So who knows? And I think we get the, the White Povetkin fight done. That's you know White will be favourite to come through, but Povetkin is so dangerous, so experienced, you know. And 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 look, if he catches White, he could go. So that could change things. And you know, there's a lot of talk about the fights we all want to see, but there's. Povetkin, Pulev, Wilder, there's some, there's some big, experienced, dangerous heavyweights in the way. So let's just take it one step at a time. And as I said with, with Fight Camp, it's a bit about patience, a bit about adaptability. I think let's enjoy the fact that we've got White Povetkin at Matchroom Square Garden on August the 22nd, plus one of the great fights in Katie Taylor and Delphine Bassoon, a fight that Katie's wanted since the day that everybody doubted her people. A lot of people felt that she lost the fight. She wants, she wanted the next week to fight Delphine Bassoon again, you know, and as Amanda Serrano, just that all broke down. That was the one name. And I'm so pleased 
that there was a lot of pressure to get that fight on. And a lot of people, you know, have, have made that happen. So it's a great night, August of 22nd. Let's enjoy that. And let's then look and, uh, you know, then you'll be asking the question to Dillian and to Eddie afterwards. And we all will. What happens next? But maybe we won't know what will happen next because, as I said, of the of the government and the crowds and everything else that September, October, November help. Let's, let's get on with August step by step, Coop. Sounds like a plan. Okay, Adam, thank you very much for your time. I know you're not doing anything else, so uh, <laughs> I'm joking. You've probably got a lot of work to do. But, um, yeah, appreciate your time, Adam. Uh, enjoy your time in the bubble. And uh, let's hope for a, a great fight camp second week this Friday night, live on Sky Sports and the zone. Cheers, Coogan. Looking forward to it. See you soon, mate. Thank you, mate.